Um, so today, um, I noticed an article on um, Fox News, and this article is about the man at the Vatican, the little horn, wants to make changes to the Messiah's prayer, as if he has the authority to do so. And uh, this particular story has been floating around the internet for the last few days, but I didn't really want to do anything with it until uh, a stronger source um, makes mention of it. And since uh, Fox News made mention of it, I decided to go ahead and um, talk about it. But before I do that, I want to remind everybody that I wear... The clothes of shame, the clothing of shame, and the yellow star for Israel's sake, in honor of those who died in the Holocaust, those who survived the Holocaust at the hands of European Christians. So the story kind of goes like this, and um, I will use quotations because, um, or I will try to find different wording so as not to refer to this man as Pope, because Yeshua the Messiah said, call no man your father because you have only one father in heaven. So Francis has suggested that he wants to make a change to the Lord's Prayer, widely known among the faithful as the Our Father. Specifically, the Catholic leader said in an interview Wednesday that he would prefer to adjust the phrase, lead us not into temptation, saying that it is too strongly suggested that God leads people to sin. Okay, I will stop right there because... What he is essentially saying is the word temptation means sin. Well, apparently this man does not study his Bible, because if he did, he would never say such a thing. So let's go to Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and let us find the truth. This app is something else. Okay. Take your pick. Matthew 6.13, Luke 11.14. I will go to Luke, I mean uh, Luke 11.4. I will go to Luke 11 verse 4. Now, let us bear in mind, folks, that um, number one, Aramaic is the oldest form of Hebrew, and the Gospels were translated from, Arab, uh, from Aramaic to Greek and then to English. However, there has been no change in the meaning of the word. Temptation. All right, it comes from the Greek word uh, P-E-I-R-A-S-M-O-S. -E it is number 3986 in Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. You cannot find anywhere in the description of this word that says sin. Yet, the man at the Vatican said that that's exactly what it implies. Which means his statement is absolutely 100% false. It is not even a half-truth. So what does this word mean? Short definition, trial. Trial, as in, you have been arrested. You have been charged with a crime. And now there is a court date. 
where you will be put on trial. And if there's enough evidence against you, you will be found guilty. And a sentence will be handed down. Now, so the first definition is trial. Now, sometimes the sentence is only probation. And that is the next word, probation. Then testing. To take a test to see whether you are, whether you stand with the truth or not. Being tried. Well, being tried is going back to the word trial. Temptation is going back to the word pierasimos. Uh, then comes C, which is the result of being found guilty. Calamity. Affliction. You see, folks, Israel was put on trial and was found guilty. And Israel was, therefore, driven out of their land for thousands of years for sin. And now, There it comes an hour of temptation. How do I know this? It's in Revelation 3. The hour of temptation is not an hour of baiting people into sin, as the men of the Vatican seems to imply. Okay, Revelation 3, message to the church in Philadelphia. I've gone over this time and time and time again, and the crux of the, the, the point here is in verse 13, where it says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So this applies to everyone who reads this. But it says right here in the middle of it that an hour of temptation is coming upon the earth to try those that dwell on the earth. That's exactly what it says. Let's start in verse 7. To the angel, to the church in Philadelphia write, These things says, He that is holy, he that is true, he has the key of David, he that opens it, and no man can shut it. And I'm telling you, folks, that door is about to be kicked up wide open. And the nations will be put to the test, will also be put on trial in the court of Jehovah's throne. No man can shut it, and then he shuts it, and no man can open it. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. Why? Because you have a little strength, and you have kept my word, and because you have not denied my name. What is his name? Yehoshua. The denial of his name is using a different name. Say like calling him, say like calling the Messiah, Henry. That would be a denial of his name. Or maybe calling him Francis. That would be denying his name. Or calling him Jesus or Jesus would also be denying his name. So these people have not denied his name and have kept his word. And for that reason... The door to the kingdom will be opened to them. Okay? 
And then he says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan who claim they are Jews or who claim to be replacing Israel, Israel's replacement. But they are not, and they do lie. Why? What is the synagogue of Satan? That's the, the people who worship the graven image on Sunday. That's the synagogue of Satan. Because Zeus is Satan, and hey, Zeus is an honor of Zeus. Because you have kept the word of my patience, Listen very carefully, because you have kept the word of my patience. I will also keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Joel 3. How will our Father in Heaven do this? How will He try all those who dwell upon the earth? Here it is. Verse 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, which means within that generation, generation is a hundred years, when I bring the exiles of Judah and Jerusalem, or the Jews of Jerusalem, I will also, within that time frame, and he began to bring the Jews of Jerusalem into the Holy Land after World War II. That's when they started coming, the Exodus. And within that time frame, within that generation, I dare say, he said, I will gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will put them on trial. Because of what they did to my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and partitioned, my land. Put them on trial. That is the hour of temptation. How is he going to gather these nations and bring them to judgment in the hour of temptation? It is in Zechariah 12, I do believe. I have a hard time remembering these things. Yes. Zechariah 12 and verse 1. The burden of the word of Jehovah, the Father, our Father, for Israel's sake, saith Jehovah, who stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and formed the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem, a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and Jerusalem, Jews of Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces. Though all the people of the earth shall be gathered together against it. In that day, said Jehovah, I will smite every horse with, with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah. In other words, he's not going to turn his back on the house of Judah anymore. He's first going to open his eyes again on the house of Judah. And he will smite every horseman, every tank, Every incoming rocket of the enemy with blindness. 
and the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be the strength in Jehovah of hosts, their Elohim. So, Jerusalem is going to be used as bait to bring this about. And President Donald Trump seems to be a tool in Jehovah's hand. I never could have imagined that he would have had the guts to do what he just did. Never in a thousand years could I have imagined that he, because every president before him were cowards, every one of them, would not, would not put Israel's, uh, their embassy in Jerusalem, would not do it. Would not recognize Jerusalem as Israel's eternal capital, even though, even though the U.S. Congress passed a law that could not be vetoed, demanding that the executive branch do so. And even last couple of days, there were there was whispers out there. Oh, Donald Trump, he's still going to sign the waiver. He's still going to sign. Well, he hasn't signed the waiver. And I don't care what anybody says now. If he hasn't signed the waiver, if he declares Jerusalem to be Israel's capital, the State Department has no choice but to follow through on what the law says. So now, what has happened? Jerusalem has now become bait. And I've talked about Haggai 2, verses 18 through 22, about a particular day when this all starts. The 24th day of the ninth month. And I've been asking the question, and I don't know the answer. I keep tell, saying, I do not know the answer to this. That it all begins on the 24th day of the ninth month, but you see which year. I don't know the answer. And the reason why I say I don't know the answer is because in Haggai 2, verses 18 through 22, it says, On that day, that is the day that he's going to overthrow the throne of kingdoms and their horses and all that. Well, in order for that to happen... On that day, Jerusalem has to be already completely surrounded, and the attack must begin. Well, Jerusalem is not completely surrounded yet. Only now, only now, is Jerusalem becoming the bait to bring those people in. So the way I am starting to look at this now is the nations are not gathered round about yet. Although one could make the argument that they are with Hezbollah, Russia, and uh, different people, have, different nations having their bases around. But I don't think, I think that that particular episode is about them actually attacking. As soon as they attack, that is when that day comes. So I believe they're going to begin to attack Israel or begin to attack Judah and Jerusalem on that day. Now, granted, we're at um, four days before the 24th day of the ninth month. I suppose anything could happen between now and then, huh? Well, I don't see it happening between now and then, but I could be wrong. So we may have to wait another year, but then again, maybe not. We shall see. However, what is happening is this. Word is going around to all the nations. We have got to do something about 
Jerusalem. This is what's happening. So, <clears throat> has does the has the hour of temptation going to start? This particular twenty fourth day, of the ninth month. I'm not certain of it. I don't know. Is it going to start on the 24th day of the ninth month? Yes, it is. It says so. In, um, in Haggai 2, verses 18 through 22. The putting the nations on trial and rendering a verdict and throwing down their kingdoms and their chariots. So, um, I believe the step that we are in now is the gathering of all nations. So the nations have to be gathered in first. I don't think that that step is complete yet. But I think it's partly happened. You have Turkey, Turkey, Iraq, Iran, Hezbollah, Lebanon, Syria, gathering the forces closer and closer, closer and closer to the borders of Israel. That's what they're doing. Um, but I don't think it's finished yet. So, as I said, I think the gathering begins right now. I think, as I said, that um, Donald Trump is being used by Jehovah to bring all of Israel hating nations against Jerusalem. And as I pointed out yesterday, what Nikki Haley, the, um, the ambassador to the UN, said was this. The Jerusalem issue is going to be, have to be decided by Israel and the Palestinians. In other words, we have nothing to do with it. That essentially is the right call to make, and I'll explain why. Because it says in Joel, I mean in Zechariah, well, Verse 3, in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. I believe now that Jerusalem has become that burdensome stone. R right after Donald Trump's announcement, Jerusalem has become that burdensome stone now. For all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. So Nikki Haley, the ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the U.N. said, Essentially, the United States of America is not going to be burdened with that stone. That is not our decision to make. We back away from it. We merely say that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. Period. The United States Congress declared that Jerusalem is Israel's undivided capital. So when you have these two branches of government saying it belongs to Israel and we are having no part of it being a burdensome stone, we're not going to stick our hands where it, don't, where it doesn't belong. They may have, especially Donald Trump, may have just saved the United States from the hour of temptation. You heard me right. By taking the right action, by making the correct decision, Donald Trump, President of the United States, may have just spared or caused Jehovah to spare the United States from the hour of temptation. Folks, do you realize how significant this is? This, is, to me, 
is the most incredible thing that I've ever seen, even more so than the birth of my own son. It is more significant and more incredible. It is more joyous to me than even when I got married long ago. This is, to me, this is a, a monumental occasion. This is a, a historical event that will go down in history as one of the most courageous things a man has ever done. And he may have saved millions and millions of lives in this part of the world. Because right here in Zechariah 12, it gives criteria. It says all nations of the earth, all the people of the earth are going to be gathered against it, but then it says in that, uh, that um, those that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. So it does provide criteria. The people who don't burden themselves with it why should they be cut to pieces? But take a look around you in the next few weeks, every day. You will see which nations that are going to burden themselves with Jerusalem. They have not read scripture, just like the man at the Vatican has not read scripture about what the hour of temptation is all about, or lead us not into temptation is all about. And... Furthermore, Revelation 3 guarantees there's a promise that there is a certain group of people that are going to escape the hour of temptation. Because they have kept the word of his patience. What is that? Okay, so the word saints always, and I mean always, has to do with the Jews. Unfortunately, the man at the Vatican twisted that word too. Because you see, the book of Revelation, when it talks about the saints and those who were martyred for the name of Yeshua, that's talking about two different people, two different groups of people. One is the Jews, and the other ones are the followers of Yeshua. Okay, so when it talks about the saints, it's talking about the Jews. Now, um, man, I done forgot what I was going to say. I forgot my train of thought. Um, about the saints. Um, give me a minute here. <sighs> I'll just have to Pull up the saints. lost my train of thought. I may have to do this, uh, finish this on another day, um, <clears throat> but I will do this. Uh, Daniel 7 verse 22 talks about how the little horn is going to be speaking blasphemous things until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints, the Jews, possessed the kingdom. And the, the, the word saints means holy people. And Revelation 17 talks about this woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua. Two different groups of people. So, I 
like I said, I lost my train of thought, but I've got most of everything that I wanted to talk about in today. So, like I said before, I'm keeping a watchful eye and watch the nation prepare to gather around Jerusalem for judgment.